Hey everyone, today I'm going to do an update on a previous quick tip video that I had done on linear interpolation. In that video, I did both a linear and a spline interpolation through a tear data function. Now, there were a lot of comments on that video, a lot of views on that video. It was very popular, but a lot of comments where people were trying to do this over grouped values, um, or some people were having trouble getting the tear expression to work. Uh, so. I thought, why not just make a data function that can make this easier for you to use? So moving forward, this is my recommended way to do linear interpolation in Spotfire. So this data function can be found on our TIBCO Community Exchange. You can see all the data functions we have available in our library, our data function library on the community. Uh, click on the uh, linear interpolation data function and that will take you to a download where you get an SFD file and you can use the data function that I'm about to show you here today. So for a simple linear interpolation, what I have here is uh, some data on a vehicle racing and it has some missing data points. You can see this kind of shooting around here. It has some missing data points. So what I'm going to bring in is my linear interpolation and this is my data function. And what I need to do is uh, make sure you first have the R packages zoo and dplyr installed. That's going to be needed for this. Um, but I'm going to go to my historical performance data and my reference data where I'm actually in trying to interpolate on the values um, where I, I, I where my datum is essentially and my intervals of new values. Uh, that's going to be my race time. So that's my timestamp column in this example. Now this could be any kind of sequential value that helps your helps the Spotfire determine where it should interpolate values for. Um, now my interpolation columns, uh, I'm going to bring in my I'm going to go to select columns here, and I'm going to bring in my speed column, and I also had a fuel level column. So now I'm going to interpolate on multiple columns, and uh, when I hit OK and I hit OK it's going to do a linear interpolation. So let's take a look at the results. So first, actually, the results, you want to add these as a calculated column to your original data table. And then you just hit OK. And now I can see in this historic uh, performance data, I have, for instance, when I scroll over to speed and fuel level, you'll see I have these missing values here. But I've just added these two calculated columns for speed and linear and speed and fuel level both linearly interpolated those have completed values so if i want to visualize this um, i can actually grab my um, speed and fuel my uh, speed linear column and i'll put this here and you can see this overlaid so what this is showing is if i if i actually had this on top you'll see this complete value of these are all the linearly, this is all the values, including the linearly interpolated values. If I put this behind my blue line, you can better see the blue line is the, or sorry, yeah, if I put this, um, the blue line behind this, then um, you're able to actually see where the interpolated values are, which are these red points. Now, it's unlikely that the speed just kind of dropped off there. So what I might choose to do is actually a spline interpolation. So when I go to this linear interpolation, I go to settings, I actually have these optional parameters for grouping. If I have different groups, in this example, I don't, uh, or a method, I can specify spline here. So when I do a spline interpolation, then um, when this data function calculates, and I go to historic performance data, it's going to have a new column speed spline and fuel level spline. It used to say linear, now it says spline. So now that the name changed, this column's changed. So I need to put speed spline on here. And now you can see that the speed has been spline interpolated, which is a better estimate here. Um, now, the spline interpolation is good when you don't have really noisy data. Um, but what I'm about to show you for air quality data, uh, it's very noisy and the spline won't work as well. So let's go to the air quality data. Here I have air quality data for all kinds of different cities in India. So I can scroll up and I can, you can see I have different cities in India. Uh, so this is going to be actually a grouping. When I look at my data set for air quality, you'll see that I have 
a city string here. And the city string uh, changes um, over time. So I want to actually interpolate not across just the columns of data, but also for each of these groupings. So let me go ahead and show you this linear interpolation for this data. Linear interpolation, and I'm going to do my air quality data. And I'm going to use a date time column as my reference data. And for my interpolated columns, I'm going to select my air quality data. I'm going to select my columns. Uh, I'm going to do it for all these pollutants and the air quality index. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to do my grouping here for my air quality data. I'm going to do by the city. And for my method, I'm going to do the spline as well. So I'm going to type in spline there. I'm going to hit OK. And it computes pretty quickly. Again, I want to add this as calculated columns back to my air quality data set. And I'm going to hit OK. Now I have all of these spline interpolated values here uh, for this, this column. So uh, let me add uh, air quality index spline and put that in the background. So you can see here for different cities, the air quality index on the spline interpolation, since this is really noisy, this is actually jumping through some pretty extreme values. So it's kind of come down all the way to negative zero for uh, or negative numbers below zero for certain air quality index. So this isn't actually a good interpolation method. For this really noisy data, I might actually want to use a, um, a linear interpolation. So let me go ahead and do change this to a linear interpolation. Linear. And AQI, linear. Now let's look at that. Now this is a much better linear, much better interpolation for these. You're seeing that, yes, it's directly and straight, but it's not swinging to extreme values. The purple there are the linearly interpolated values. So it's working for each city as a grouping and it's working as a, um, a direct straight linear interpolation. So I hope that was helpful for you. I might add other interpolation methods to this data function in the future. So keep an eye out in the comments. Uh, I'll post on there if I update this with other methods or if you have ideas and you wanna see different interpolation methods, you can go ahead and comment that as well. Um, and we will see if we can implement that and, and update this data function for that. But for now, it's just linear and spline interpolation. Um, again, hope it was helpful for you. If it was, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you hit the like button. The YouTube algorithm likes those things and uh, we like when the YouTube algorithm likes us. So it really helps us out and uh, we appreciate you watching our Dr. Spot for a quick tip videos and we will catch you next time. Thank you.